Rise ye ashen, tarnished, chosen undead, and welcome Souls fans, new and old, to the second chapter of our Dark Souls Remastered Platinum playthrough. Worst case scenario, no drops that aren't guaranteed, hopefully easy to follow um, Platinum Guide. So, we have set ourselves up ready for the Gargoyles, so the last thing we did was we spent some souls, this is what our stats look like, level 17 at the moment. The last thing we did was vitality up to 15 at the end of the last video. We have reversed our hollowing, so we now look a bit more derpy uh, than we did before. Um, but that is so that we can do our summon for the boss. We are going to fight smart, not hard. We're not trying to impress anyone other than to be able to say, we platinumed Dark Souls 1. We are part of that select few. So, from here... We are going to come back up the stairs and we're going to go back up the lift. At least we don't look as derpy as this guy. Yeah, that's right, we were talking to you. Right. Up we go. So we're four trophies in so far. Ready to get our fifth. Uh, possibly our sixth on this as well. Hopefully we'll have enough time to be able to beat Quaylag. So two bosses hopefully in this section. Not all videos are going to be as long as these first ones. Um, it will be a little bit more broken up as we go. So we're going to lure this guy down the stairs. Um, yes, you attacked that post. It's clearly in your way. Come on, drop down. There you go, well done. Right, and he jumps. We're going to get behind him and chomp. Okay, so for the next bit where the channel is, we are also going to get severely mobbed by hollows. So what I want you to do, two-hand your drake sword. Get ready to use R2 uh, or R trigger if you're on Xbox. The channeler should just spam his attack or do a little dance that's going to buff these hollows. R2 sends a big shockwave as you can see. So all we're going to do is let them line up and then bam. we're going to use that move sparingly though because what it does do is it does degrade your durability. Um, so from 360 we're now on 238 because of that R2. So use it somewhat sparingly. Try and make sure if they do get too close to you make sure your shield is up and back away uh, that way. Now the channel are just kind of standing around there. Normally you're hearing a pew pew firing his little spells at you um, or doing his little dance where you're kind of hearing a chuck chuck chuck. Um, worst case scenario he will join them and you will hopefully bop him with your R2 shockwave. Um, if he does get close to you just make sure you block because he does a lot of damage. Oh there's the chuck chuck. Trying to make sure he doesn't Dying down there is fine, but if he drops down there, it's a pain in the ass uh, for you to kill him. Now, what I'm looking for is if he's got his item on him. He does not. Don't worry, I'm expecting he will not. It is such a rare item to drop the channel a trident. We are going to farm for it later. If he does drop it here, pick it up. Make sure you pick it up, because when I do the channel trident farm, and I start talking and complaining about how long it takes because it's such a rare drop, you will just be able to laugh and go, I don't know what you're talking about, I've got it straight away. It's easy. Um, so yeah, so Channel of Trident, odds are it will not drop there, but if it does, wow, grab it. You get to save a whole bunch of time later on. Cool, this night. We're going to come up here. We are going to free Lotric. Lotric, the Firekeeper Killer. So, as my title implies, if you leave him alone, he will kill our Firelink Firekeeper, the one that cannot speak. That is obviously very bad. We are going to kill Lotric because he is going to drop a ring that we are going to use for the entirety of the game. The reason we're freeing him, because you don't have to free him, is we're going to get a Sunlight Medal for doing so. 
So talk to him, talk to him one more time, and he'll tell you he needs a bit of time to give you his reward. Lovely. We'll crack on. Come out here to the right. Through the tables. Roll or attack this barrel. And the corpse will drop a humanity. Okie dokie. Onwards to our second boss. So we're going to summon Soler. Um Now, those of you who are familiar with the game might say, Hey, why are summoning Soler? You need to cut the tail off the gargoyles. Gargoyles are easy, yada yada yada. Look, Soler makes this fight near enough free. Um, we are playing smart. There are so many opportunities to cut the tail off the gargoyles, including this one. Um, Soler is going to start taking the aggression away from you so that you can just get behind the gargoyle with a tail and you get a couple of attacks before either Soler kills him or you kill him. Uh, ideally, you do want to cut the tail off the gargoyle here. That way you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the run. Odds are you're going to end up with about four of them. Um, if you don't, do not panic. Don't go, oh no, I need to reset or anything. You are going to fight the gargoyles here three times. We're doing three runs. Uh, we're just going a third of the way into the, the third run. Also, there are more gargoyles later in the game. So do not panic if you don't get the tail here, uh, but just try. The key thing is play safe, keep your shield up, let Solaire start to uh, annoy them and take the aggro. Uh, you are going to get two gargoyles um, at one point, so just... This is why Solaire makes it so much easier. So the gargoyle, straight away, just go to attack. So roll in, sealed up. If you lock off, you can then just one-handed swing to fine. There you go. All you need to do is one hit on the tail, and that is enough with this sword to cut the tail off. You don't need to use two hands. Just be wary. Now you've got two gargoyles. The second one likes to breathe fire. Like so. We'll deal with him in a minute. Swing, you dead, and Soler's probably going to kill this guy. Yeah, I see. No, Soler, the, 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 the gargoyle was here. He, he was over here. Why Why were you... What was wrong with that cloud, Soler? Why, why were you throwing at this cloud? Seriously. So, if Soler survived the fight, you will get an extra sunlight medal. Fantastic. Um, you need to collect four sunlight medals outside of... Uh, the chests that we're going to pick up twice, which is a chest of three. So, already we have got an extra medal from him. We're going to get an extra one from Lautrec. Uh, so we are well on our way to getting the four Sunlight medals. There are plenty of other opportunities. So the aim is we're not going to have to farm Sunlight medals from the Maggots. Don't worry if, if uh, you don't get any of these extra ones. Uh, well, you will get the ones from Lautrec. Uh, but don't worry if you don't get any of the Solaire ones, we'll be able to farm those as well. So, come up the ladders, pull the lever, crunk, and our fifth trophy. Ring the bell, undead church. Congratulations. So, Homeward Bone, that's going to take you back to Firelink. the last bonfire we rested at. You are now going to come down these stairs and there's Lotrek. So we're going to talk to him. He's going to say something. He's going to give you your sunlight medal. Say something pretentious. And what we're going to do now, remember that kicking we were doing before? That's what we're going to do here. If you kick him, he will not... He will take his weapons out, but he will not attack you. If you attack him, he will attack back. And he is a bit tough. So kick him twice and he falls off instead. Once you have the souls, what you're going to do is you're going to quit the game. And you're going to reload. When you do so, the important thing here, because he died to falling off the edge of the map, the drop that he has doesn't exist because it doesn't have a platform to be on. So by quitting and reloading, that item drop will appear where he was before we kicked him off the ledge. Hopefully that makes sense. There we go. 
pick up humanity times five, you think that's good enough, but no, the ring of favor and protection, or the ring of fat. Why this is so good? Have a look at our health right now. Have a look at our stamina right now. Ring of favor and protection boosts HP, stamina, and your equipment load as well. However, when you take this off, it will break. So we will never take this ring off. So I'm putting it in the right hand slot. And if you look now, look at the buff that's given to our HP and stamina. HP, easy to see because it's the unhealed amount. Stamina, it's that whole extra four black bars at the end. And our firekeeper is still alive. Otherwise, over time, and it won't take long, he will kill her, laugh about it, and then you'll have to go on a mini quest to be able to get her back. Why is that a problem? Because if she goes, this fire goes. And we want the fire, fire link fire uh, for some time. Now, we are going to put two levels into endurance. We're going to get endurance to 12. Make sure you have at least 8,000 souls left. That's why we're not putting anything more into our health. And I'll give some credit here to JRPG Gaming. Um, something that I did not used to do at this stage, but it just makes so much sense in terms of how much money you have, in terms of souls, and where you are in the game. Um, come here, talk to Derby, and we're going to buy the Homeward Miracle. It is a miracle that we can't even use yet. 8,000 souls, that is quite a lot for the early game. However, we are going to use this miracle a lot once we get our faith up to 18 later on. It lets, basically, it is the Homeward Bone as a spell. Um, you need 18 faith to use it, we only have 14. Um, however, just getting it now means when we are able to use it, we don't have to get back to Firelink. Uh, it saves a bit of routing, it saves a bit of, just it makes sense when you have the money for it. Uh, and honestly, 8,000 souls right now, it's going to be so easy to get that again. Um, yeah, fair play. It's just the perfect time to get it. Also, we now don't need to talk to that monk again for this run. We can just ignore him. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to come up the, la up the elevator. The ladder. Up the elevator. Come out here. Crossbow guy. Kill him. At which point this guy should start walking. Let him bounce off the shield, kill him. Kill him. Down we go. And we're going to rest at the Undead Parish Bonfire. We're going to come down, we're going to talk to Andre, we're going to repair our weapon because we used that R2. We don't want the durability to get too weak. So, repair. You don't have to repair anything else, I just tend to do it. It only costs like less than 10 souls. Um, and then what we're going to do with the rest of our souls, we are going to spend all of them on as many standard arrows as possible. You should end up somewhere between 100 100 and, well, anywhere around the 100, 120 mark. 133 is perfectly fine, but ideally you want around 100. I know that sounds like a lot. Um, we're going to use arrows selectively, um, but yeah, you're, you're going to want somewhere in the region of 100 arrows. Also, by spending the rest on arrows, we have now resynced, so you now have the same number of souls as I do, give or take a couple. So, from here, uh, yeah, we're going to increase our humanity to 10, so I have 8, so I'm going to spend 2. Spend however many you need to get to 10. 10 means we have the maximum for item discovery, um, which means that enemies are more likely to drop items and more likely to drop rarer items. This time, my demon, don't worry about him, we're just going to run past him for now, we are going to kill him later, but we're not going to do it right now. So. Just run by. If you take the path that I took, he won't hit you. He's not going to come past where he is. He's lazy, so don't worry. We're going to come across our first tree enemy. 
we're going to just run at him and swing. Oh, that wasn't supposed to be a kick. Oh, there we go. He did not drop anything. So these have a chance of dropping moss. There are three types. There is the red uh, moss, which uh, alleviates bleed buildup. We do not want that. I bet he was going to drop the one that we do want. Um, there is the purple moss, uh, which heals poison, which is good. We do want those. However, more importantly, we want the blooming purple moss, which is purple with a white top. Now, what that does is that heals toxic. Um, these guys are not dropping anything for me. So, as you can see, that one was actually rooted in the ground. You could make out the difference of his top. Um... Once he spawns up, he gets invincibility frames while he's doing that shake, and then you can hit him again. But you can hit him while he's in the ground, as I did. Okay, so I got no moss, so that's a shame, but I guess this is a worst case run. So it's good in the sense that I won't have an extra toxic heal that you might not have, I guess. So we are going to go to Blight Town, um, which is an area where you will definitely get poisoned, but you can also get toxic. We're going to avoid that, and I'll explain later, but for now, we are going to come in, and we're going to kill this Crystal Lizard. He's going to start doing his wave. As soon as he does, make sure you get him hit, so that you stop him from disappearing. Two Twinkling Titanite, and this one does tend to drop uh, Titanite Shards. Um, again, do not worry if he didn't drop any other Titanites for you. Again, when we get to using large Titanites, uh, I will only be factoring in for the minimum amount, you will have enough to buy anything that you don't have, even if I do have it. So, come down here. We're going to get the lever set and our longbow, which we're going to equip. Equip the longbow and equip the lever armor. We're also about to get our grass crest shield. Grass crest shield. Um, which is the shield we're going to be using for 90-something percent of the rest of the run. Um, you could use it for literally the whole run, but first things first, there is a Black Knight with a Halberd. So for these guys, there is a way you can try and cheese him off so that he falls off the edge. However, that imposes some risk to yourself. We're going to fight smart. The Halberd Knights are so easy to backstab. Um, they leave big openings, so we're just going to lure him into this big open area, get behind him. He has very slow attack recovery. You can also... Nope, we can't get a cheeky second backstab on him, but that's fine. Maybe we'll get it here. So, keep up. There you go. Three backstabs, and he's dead. Guaranteed drop, blue titanite chunk. Optional drop, he may drop the Black Knight Halberd. If he does, fantastic, you get it a little bit early. But we're going to get that when we do the Black Knight farm. So don't worry, we will have that weapon. We are going to use that as our new game plus weapon. And we're going to use that as the weapon that we fight Gwyn with at the end of this first run. Um, but we're a long way away from that. We have some other weapons along the way. Because again, I am only using what is guaranteed. So that you can guaranteed follow along with the guide. Grass Crest Shield. So it does not have 100% physical damage reduction, 95, so it's near enough. But importantly, it recovers your stamina speed. It improves your stamina speed recovery. So now you'll heal your stamina will recover quicker for having this. Fantastic. We are going to take off our weapons so that we have a fast roll and we recover our stamina even faster. Ignore this bonfire. Pull the lever. And we're going to wait for the lift. Hello. So, where we're coming to, we're going to run past some drakes. Um, can be intimidating. However, do not worry. If you follow my pathing, you will be safe. Worst case scenario, if you do die, we're going to make sure we get the two items that we need. And then there is a cheeky shortcut we can take from Firelink using the master key so you can still get to where we end up without having to do this again. But for now, 
Run, stick to the left, shield up. He's doing lightning, he's put your shield back down. Once you get to the grassy bush here, let go of stamina, and then once it's refilled, do it again, put your shield up. He will either do lightning or he will do the dive that he did just there, no worries. Once your stamina is nearly empty, let go and start to run again. Keep going. Once you get to here, you are now safe. Those drakes will not pursue you anymore. This large venomous poison dragon is asleep. We are going to get the soul of a proud knight here. Now, he has two items by his mouth there. Once we get near them, he is going to wake up. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk in the middle of the two items. We're going to spam the X button, or A if you're on Xbox, to pick them up. And then as soon as you've picked them up, you are going to try and roll his attack. Now, if he hits you with it, it will not be enough to kill you. I'm actually going to heal up just to play safe using heal. After he's done that attack, he will either do a follow-up swipe, at which point you just need to make sure you are running to that edge of that path there, or more likely he's going to do his venomous spew, at which point you have all the time in the world to get away. But the important thing is, pick up the items quickly, get your shield up, try and dodge the attack. If not, you're going to get knocked into this wall, and you're just, you're just going to try and book it. You're going to try and run away uh, to safety. Okay, so we're going to come in and spam, pick up, pick up, roll, and run. There you go, he's doing his spew attack, which means you've got plenty of time. Once you're on this bridge, you are perfectly safe. He does not leave that area. We are not going to fight him, we don't need to. Uh, we've got the two items we needed. So I know that was really quick, so you may not have seen. That was the Astora Straight Sword and the Dragon Crest Shield. Both items are needed for the Knights on a Trophy. So congratulations, we are on our way to that trophy, collecting those 52 total items. We're now going to equip our Drake Sword and our Dragon our Grass, no, not Grass Quest, the Bow, sorry, Longbow. But yeah, there's the Dragon Crest Shield as I showed you and the Store Straight Sword. Those were the two items that the Dragon was hiding. From Firelink, that is a shortcut. We'll find that on the way back. So if you did get the items but you did die, I would say skip to the end of the Blight Town and you'll see how to get back through that door so that you can get back to here if you don't want to try just taking that route again. Once we're here, we need to equip some arrows. There we go. With your bow, once you get past this pot, you will be able to see the trolls, toxic troll or poison trolls. With your bow, we're just going to lure, don't know why that that's not even stuck on anything, but it's enough that we're going to lure one at a time. That is very important, one at a time. Ah. Nope. We are just going to backstab them. If they do drop an item, it is going to be their dung. Yes, they literally drop their dung. Um, although that is a tactic. Uh, so the dung you throw, it toxics an enemy, but it also toxics you. However, it is not as fast and acting toxic as normal. So there is a strategy where you use that as a way of uh, avoiding... So enemies can't toxic you because you're already toxic but you're not taking as much fast damage over time. In honesty, my stance on this is we are just going to... If we get hit by Toxic, we are going to use a Homeward Bone and we're going to try again. Um, there's only two parts of the, of the run that are really high risk of Toxic. Um, and for the amount of time you would be under Toxic, even if you did the Dung approach, um, it's still not uh, going to be enough to save you. So this guy's a bit confused. Come on. I'm just drawing him where it's a bit easier to get around him because, as you can see, there's different obstructions 
and other things in the way. They drop 500 souls each, so it is worth killing them. You can just run past them if you want, but that's 1,500 souls, and at this stage of the game, 1,500 is still a relatively good amount of souls. We're also avoiding risk in case something goes wrong. Come on, I just... Ooh. So as you can see, they hit you with a poison. Um, so if they do hit you with your shield down, one hit shouldn't be enough. As you can see there, I said it and it happened. One hit shouldn't be enough, but they're relatively easy to avoid or just keep your shield up. Backstab's definitely the way to go. And we're in Blight Town. Many players' worst area, least favourite area. Not mine, I think it's fine, especially because we're skipping half of it. We don't actually need this key, we've got the master key, but I always pick it up anyway. Two hand your weapon in preparation. Drop down this ladder. Drop down here and get ready to kill this chaos spider. Two hits. Three hits if you're one handing, two hits for two. Okay, what we're gonna do now, we are going to drop, drop, and drop. So Drop, drop, and drop. And for good measure, we are going to drop again. Plunging attack. We're now going to let the mosquito catch up. So that's that little flying bug you can see. We're going to let him catch up and we're going to kill him with the boat. I said we're going to kill him with the boat. Thank you. There's another one over here. We're going to kill him with the boat. And there's a third one. There we go. Once you've killed three, that is less risk of you getting knocked off this next section. Um, if the third one doesn't appear, he'll be stuck in this area. So, just be mindful of that. I'm going to heal up. See, haven't used my Estus. Just use the heal spells when you're out of combat. Not a problem. Okay. So, key thing is, it's always going to be left then right. So here we are on the left. Keep your shield up. And right. Two hand when you're at the end. Kill him. Get your shield back up. The reason our shield is up, and I'm going to run, is there is a toxic blow piper. And you can see, there you go. There's the arrows as they're trying to hit you. They can't hit you where you are here. Grab the crimson set and the tin banishment catalyst. And we're going to put on the crimson set. Can I keep the leather gloves on? Yes, keep the leather gloves on because they are better. So yes, that toxic blowpiper is attacking you with toxic darts. We do not want to get hit by that because two hits guarantees toxic. If you've got your shield up though, it will be four hits to toxic you if it hits your shield. So just be mindful. Pillagist for our first sorcery rem remedy. Now we're going to have to go back on that path. That path, it may look like there is another way. You must go left, then right. Otherwise, you will fall off 100% of the time. There is a left, middle, and right starting part. So you want to start on the left, and you're going to cross over. I do not even run. I just keep no sprinting. Left, left, right. Ignore any mosquito that was left. I don't know where he came from. I don't care. I am more focused right now on making sure that I survive, because if you die there, you're going to have to come all the way back. From here, we're going to wait and we're going to get on the water wheel. Once a path drops, we're going to go here. Now, if you are like me and you are unhollowed, you are going to get invaded, that is a good thing. If you are hollowed, if you have died, obviously drop off the water wheel where I did please, otherwise you will die again. Drop off the water wheel two hands. Swing. Swing. Run a bit. You're going to trudge in the swamp. You'll go slow even though you're running. That's how the swamp works. Swing. Swing. Dark Sp Spirit Man-Eater Mildred has invaded. So you can't risk at the bonfire because you've got a Dark Spirit invading you. Don't worry. Easy enough. This is not... We're playing offline so it can't be another player. This is an NPC invasion. Keep your shield up, same strategy as always, stick to your right, their left, 
backstab. Three backstabs, Mildred dead. Do not let Mildred hit you with your shield down. As you can see, when I hit Mildred, that stuns. So as long as you're to the side or behind, just keep swinging, all good. But do not let Mildred hit you with your sword down. She can stun lock you, and that means you will die. You don't want that. After she's defeated, get a humanity. As you can see in the top corner, we've gone up to 11. Three humanity items, and the butcher knife. The butcher knife we are going to convert into a boss weapon, part of our knight's honor trophy. Now we can light the bonfire. Rest the bonfire. And just to be safe, kindle the bonfire. So that will use one of your humanity. However, now, whenever you rest here, you will go up to 10 Estus Flasks, not 5. If you were... If you had died and you were at some point and you were hollowed, you would now need to reverse your hollowing, go out, turn right, get invaded, and then you'd get back to where we are now. Um, however, if you were human like me, that should play out exactly as I just did. With the souls we've got, we're going to get our vitality to 16 and endurance to 15. Getting our health equipment load and our stamina bar up. And now we are entering a part where you might get hit by toxic. So if you got the purple moss bloom, which has the purple with white on top, which heals toxic, equip that. Um, if you get toxic, you can heal it, carry on. If not, if like me, you don't have it. If we get hit by toxic, we are going to homeward bone out of dodge. So we're going to go out. We're going to two hand. We're going to go left. We're going to kill this Chaos Spider. We're going to go round this. And there's going to be another one. We are going to get our bow out. And we're going to kill these two mosquitoes. We're going to go back to our sword. Keep it two-handed. But keep an eye out. Listen to me when I say you need to go back to one hand and shield. Come up, platform. Kill, kill. Now, one hand. Run up. Keep your shield up. One, two, three. Shield up, shield up, shield up. And run, 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 run. Run, run, run. As you can see, I've got that black toxic bar already getting higher. Climb the ladder. Do not have a chance to heal yet. We need to get up this ladder and climb this one. As you can see, the blow darts are still coming. Come up here, climb the ladder. Climb the ladder. This enemy will often attack you. Two hand. Okay, now we are safe to do a heal. If you got hit with toxic, you must homeward bone out. You will die to the toxic. You do not have enough heals to be able to survive. Toxic does so much fast damage per second. Um, if you can't heal it, you have to get back. So homeward bone back, try again. As you can see, we've got another one. So as soon as you get up, run. And you're safe. From here, make sure you've got your shield ready, because you are going to get attacked. Oh no, never mind. As soon as you get here, roll into these pots. Enemy's going to come down. You will get a drop. One of those blowpipers, for reasons unknown, but it always happens 100% of the time, when you come to this ladder, one of those toxic blowpipers always falls off a ledge and dies. That's what that purple moss clump was. So the good news is it's a chance that you can actually get a blooming moss clump to heal toxic. But it's not guaranteed. As you saw, I didn't get it. So you can't factor that in to if you've got toxic as a way of healing it. So sadly, if you get toxic, the only thing you can do is try again. Careful with this enemy, you don't want to go too far up this pathway. 
because uh, more enemies can appear. Ow. Ow. Out here and right, there's an enemy that's going to be at the top. Here he is. Just be mindful, if they squat and scream at you, they are preparing their lunging grab. Pick up the soul packet. If they do a lunging grab on you, just make sure... Well, it will go past your shield and they will get a, a grab on you. Top of this ladder to the left, there is a blowpiper. So just make sure as soon as you get to the top, swing, 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 swing. You auto collect drops from them for some reason, which is only in, in your favor. So that's a poison moss clump. So more ways to heal poison. We still don't have a toxic heal. Here is one of these guys with the weapon, not a problem. Block, attack four times and he's gone. Next guy's gonna come. What a mess, two, three. Four. Absolutely no reason to pick up any items from them. There is nothing useful that they have that you could possibly want. And I'm just going to make sure that there are no hangers on. Um, odds are you will not have enemies. However, in one of my test runs, I did have two extra enemies that were following. I don't know how I got into their aggro range, but I did. So I just make sure no one else is following. Okay. Now we're going to cheese the Octo Slug. What we need to make sure you do not want to step past the edge of, edge of this lip here. If you do, it will kill you. So, attack, step back. Oh, speak of. So that's the grab attack that I was saying. So yeah, don't know where I aggroed him from. Just be aware. Oh, yeet, there he goes. Where was I? So, yes. Attack, step back. <laughs> and yeah, that, where he raised his hands, went, that was him readying to do his jumping grab. So attack, step back, which should take seven or eight hits. And you kill him. Thousand souls, but the real reason we came here is for this item here. Our first pyromancy, the power within. Once you get that, homeward bone. As you can see, there were enemies in the distance coming. There we go. So, first pyromancy achieved. From here, we are now going to go out and right, and we're actually going to head... First of all, the purple moss clump drop from the toxic blowpipers is a guaranteed, so you will have at least one, but you should have two of those. So equip those to your bar. We're going to come out and right. And we're going to defeat this Chaos Spider here. Optional. I like to kill these mosquitoes just so that I know I don't have to worry about them again. Actually, only one's aggroing. Let's run and hopefully not deal with them. You can just keep going, uh, kill this Chaos Spider here. You are going to get poisoned by the swamp. Keep an eye on your stamina bar, try not to let it fully deplete. Pick up the large Titanite Shard. Head towards this Chaos Spider. Swing, swing. Keep running, we're going to go just in front of this pillar here. What we're doing is we're avoiding those giants with their big old boulders there. So stick to where these pillars are and you're outside their aggro range. As soon as you get onto land, pop your purple moss clump to heal your poison. Keep running. As you can see, those mosquitoes that were on me, they're going to stop. Once we run up here and get into this cave, they will stop following, so don't worry about that. We will heal up in a moment. In the meantime, all we're doing, coming down here, do not, and I cannot stress, do not attack these guys. 
They are not harmful. Uh, that is much worse for you if you attack them. And we're going to summon Man Eater Mildred, the very one that <laughs> invaded us is now, because we defeated her, not only summonable, but able to defeat Quelarg on her own. We have one job, and that is to keep Mildred away from the lava. So Quelarg spews lava, Mildred can run into that lava and get stuck, and that is the only way Mildred will die. We'll not die to Quelarg, but we'll die to lava. So we need to keep Quelarg away from the lava, and try and guide so that Mildred can get around it. Quelar, key thing is just be mindful of the AoE attack when she drops her head. Um, that can do a lot of damage if you don't have your shield up. So it's going to come in, it's going to spew some lava. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack, keep the attention, shield up, and we're going to keep her away from the lava. When she is attacking, that is fine. Just keep an eye. If you can't see the head, you just have to assume that she's getting ready for her AoE attack. Keep your health up. Don't let it be too low. She's attacked. Attack her. Keep your shield up. As you can see, Mildred has done so much damage already. We've done a little bit, but not much, comparatively. Um, as long as we keep Mildred out of the lava... Uh-oh. Speak of... There we go. If you keep Mildred out of the lava, Mildred can one be one. Uh-oh. Mildred might be stuck. We're going to actually have to fight this boss. If that happens to you, don't worry. The strategy is very straightforward. Stay in her face or behind her. One attack, get your shield up. Ah, uh, Mildred. No. Come on. Come here. There we go. So what you're going to do, oh there you go, once her head goes down, shield up, step away, AoE attack coming, get in, oh, two in a row, wow, that's a new one, keep your health up, you're going to try and attack from the side, if she raises up, keep back, otherwise you're going to be want to be in right up close next to her head, as that's where you are safe to do two attacks, shield up, block the AoE. As long as you stay close to her head on uh, your right, her left, then you're perfectly fine. But as you can see there, so long as you keep her away from the lava, Mildred is able to do all the work for you. Fight smart, not hard. After that, we are now going to ring the second bell and get our sixth trophy. Ring the bell, Quelarg. Great cutscene there if you've not seen it before. The giants as they open the gate to Sen's fortress. Come down here. This wall looks a little bit sus. That's because it's an illusionary wall. Now, don't rush here. You need to say yes. Do not say no. Oh dear. Are you a new servant? Yes. It defaults to no, so make sure you switch to yes. He's then going to slow walk his ass. Okay, rest of the bonfire. Because it is a firekeeper bonfire, this one is automatically kindled. There's your firekeeper, Quailana. Now, what we're going to do, we're not going to spend these souls yet. We are going to get ourselves infected. We're then, once you're infected, it takes five minutes to take effect. So we're going to use that time wisely because we can't use it at bonfires. So we are going to cheese the ceaseless ceasefire. Ceasefire doesn't sound right. Ceaseless discharge. Um, and walk our way back and that will be enough time for the infection to take effect. First and foremost we need to get infected so to do that 
these are aggro egg sack dudes, whereas the others are all praying. These ones are not for some reason. What you want is to get grabbed. So ignore that attack. You want the one where they lean back and grab. And you're going to get hit by this three times to guarantee infection. Come on. And grab. And I'm going to heal up. Make sure you're facing them so that they grab you properly. Grab. Cool. Three. Three is the magic number. I believe it works. It can work with one, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, the unanimous consensus seems to be uh, three is the number you need. We're now going to take our weapons off. So that we have a nice fast roll. And while we're on a five minute clock for that infection to take hold, we're going to come down here. And we're going to come into... Stamina management is the name of the game here. So what I've been talking about before about don't let your stamina bar fully deplete, that is crucial at this section. Uh, because the way we're going to beat this boss is by running away from it. Um, we're not actually going to fight it. We're going to technically tap it on the wrist at the end, uh, quite literally. Um, but we are definitely not going to fight it. If you choose to fight it, it is actually one of the harder bosses in the game. There he is. However, thankfully, a boss that has an inbuilt, legitimate way of killing it uh, without... Look at that guy. He will not attack you, do not worry, he won't attack you until you grab this armor set, which we will be using actually. Um, but yeah, even if I'm here, won't attack. If you do die to him and have to come back, then you will, once you stand here, because the item is no longer here, he will start attacking. But what are we going to do? We're going to grab, that triggers ceaseless discharge. Walk up, shield up, stop. As soon as he's thrown, now run. Run, 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 run. Keep running. Keep an eye on your stamina bar. Keep an eye. Once you get to that last line, let go. Let it recharge a bit and sprint. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep going, let go and sprint again. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let go and sprint. And this way we are maximizing the duration that we can sprint for without hitting stamina fatigue where we lose it. Now, stop when you get to this bulgy part here. Keep your shield up. If you're too far forward, you will get hit by his hand. If you're too far back, you get hit by the fire on the door. Hand, fire on the door. That's also his leg there. Now what he's done, he's actually ripped his hand off to get to you. Punch, 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 punch. And there you go, five punches. And you haven't beaten him, what you've done is you've tickled him and he's let go of the ledge and fallen into his own lava. Cutscene as the lava now dries up. And you might have noticed when I stopped, I started scratching my head there. Um, and when you do that, you don't actually have control of your character. You have to wait for him to finish scratching. That is the infection taking hold. You'll also notice I'm not even sprinting at this point. I am leisurely jogging my way back to the bonfire. And the reason for that is we're still waiting for this infection to take hold. So rather than sprint and then just have to stand on the spot awkwardly for a few minutes, we are taking our time. I am going to sprint a little bit here because these egg boys are attacking. But once we're safe, we're going to start jogging again. But there you go. So yeah, ceaseless discharge, either one of the harder bosses in the game or one of the easiest because you just run, he tries to lunge at you and fails and is kind of going, well, didn't think this through because he's now dangling off the edge. Tickle his wrist with five punches or five hits with your weapon and he will then fall to his own demise. Here we are, back we are at Quelag's Domain. Back to our firekeeper, Quitlana, and we're now going to wait for the infection to finish taking hold. Shouldn't take much longer. 
you'll notice that you start scratching your head more and more. Eventually you'll scratch with two hands and then eggs will spawn and replace your head. The whole reason we're doing this is so that we can talk to this servant here and he can then state, ah, you look just like me. And in doing so, he will then sell you the pyromancy toxic mist. It is the only way you can get the toxic mist pyromancy is by getting an egghead, which is by being infected, and then talking to him. Once we've done that, it's 25,000 souls for toxic mist, which is why we've also waited and we've collected these souls. There we go. We are now parasite infected. Egg Vermifuge, that's what we're going to use to heal. And we're going to talk to him, purchase item. Don't worry about Poison Mist, we'll pick that up. Toxic Mist, 25,000 25, souls. And there you go. Now, in your items, Egg Vermifuge, and we're going to use it. Uh, my understanding is that the Parasite restricts your soul gaining capabilities. Uh, I may be wrong and apologies, feel free to put into comments uh, what it actually does if you know. Uh, while we're here, we're also going to equip the Gold Hemmed set. Um, yep, the whole set. There we go. So more, more everything from the set. It also has a higher poison resist, so you take less damage over time from poison, and it takes a bit longer for it to take effect. Rest of the bonfire. And with the rest souls, we're going to level up Vitality to 17 and Endurance to 18. We are going to be doing quite a bit of running in the next video, so getting the Endurance up is definitely a priority, but we also want to get our Vitality up for our maximum health to be there. There we go. So yeah, quite an eventful episode. Um, you know, we defeated multiple bosses. We've we've near enough finished uh, Blight Town. Uh, you'll be glad to hear. We're going to go through the swamp once. We're going to do a rather long, out of the way run, out of the way run, in our next video uh, because we need to collect another covenant. A um, a miracle and one of our dragon weapons for our royal knight's honor trophy um, so we're going to do that um, that is the great ashen hollow the giant tree um, that will be our next video and then on to sense fortress after that so i hope this has been easy enough for you to follow i hope this has been enjoyable enough for you to follow uh, and I hope that you continue to play along with me on your journey to your Platinum Trophy of Dark Souls 1, aka Dark Souls Remaster. Either one, it is the fine. Following the same path is the same path. Um, if you just want to complete the game, if you're not playing the Remastered for the Trophy option. But yeah, so I will catch you all in the next episode for The Great Hollow. And see you all then. Bye for now.